Hey guys, Alex here from IndieArtistLounge.com. Today I want to show you a simple technique for recording a drum set using four microphones. All right. So if you're just getting started recording drums or, or whatever, or haven't recorded drums in your home studio before, this is a great place to start. It's pretty simple and pretty easy. So before we dive in, there are a few preliminaries that I just want to talk to you about. And really the big thing is you want to make your drum set sound as good as you possibly can. Okay. If the drum set sounds bad, you're not going to be able to just record it and then make it sound better later in the mix. All right. It just doesn't work that way. You want to make it sound good now and then record it. So this means a few things. One, you're going to want to tune your drums. All right. They do go out of tune after a while. So tune up your snare, tune up your toms, tune your kick drum, make sure that they're sounding good individually and, and that they all sound good kind of relative to each other, especially the toms. If you have old drum heads that are, that are sounding kind of dull and lifeless or dead, then you might want to think about replacing them. That makes a huge difference in how well your drum kit sounds and thus how well your recording is going to sound. You're also going to want to use good cymbals. So if your cymbals don't sound that good or, or sound a little, I don't know, cheap or trashy, then you might want to borrow some or rent some or, or invest in some better cymbals because it really does make a huge difference when you record them. You can really sort of tell if, if the cymbals don't sound that good in the recording. So find a way to get some good cymbals as well. You also want to pick your room wisely. If you're recording them in a house, then maybe a larger bedroom would work. I'm sort of in this kind of downstairs den area in my house. It works fairly well. Generally, the bigger the better as far as the room goes. Smaller rooms just tend to have a lot of reflections and, and sort of slap backs off of the walls going on. So if you have a bigger space for the sound to kind of develop and bounce around, that tends to be better. That can be a challenge in, in a home studio, but just, just try to get the best that you can and then work with what you got. So let's dive in. As I said, we're gonna be using four microphones. Two of them are gonna be overhead mics, all right? And then we're going to put a mic on the snare drum, that's mic number three, and a mic on the kick drum. So first let's talk about the overheads. This is where sort of the majority of your drum sound is going to come from. The overhead mics are going to kind of hear the drum set more naturally than some of the mics that are sort of close right up on top of the drums because they're going to hear it sort of in the room, more like we would hear the drum set with our own ears if we were just standing in the room listening to it. So you want to focus on getting a good overhead sound. As you can see behind me, we're using what's called an XY configuration of overhead mics. And that's basically where, as you can see, the mics just sort of come down from two sides. They're at about a 90 degree angle. The, the pickup position of the mics are in about the same spot. That gives us a little bit of stereo width, all right? Not as much as some other techniques. But the thing I like about XY is we can avoid phase issues. If you don't know what phase issues are, it's basically when audio is being produced and then it hits two microphones at slightly different times. For example, if you hit the snare drum and you had two overhead mics and one was a lot further away from the snare drum than the other then the audio would hit the closer mic first and the further mic second. And when it hits those microphones at two different times, you have some of those audio waves sort of canceling each other out. What you hear in the end is kind of a more thin sound and it, it might just sound kind of a little funny. But for the XY pattern, we don't get any of those phase issues because the two microphones are in the same spot. So any audio that's produced from any of the drums hits both microphones at the same time. So the types of mics that you're gonna wanna use Typically for overheads, we use condenser microphones. This is mainly just to pick up sort of all that detail and especially the high end, the cymbals, that tends to get lost a little bit if you're using a dynamic mic. You can see I'm using small diaphragm condensers. You can also use large diaphragm condensers. That's fine, whatever you have available to you. It's best to use two of the same microphone if you can. If all you have are two completely different microphones, that's fine, go ahead, use what you have. But if you have the ability, try to use two microphones that are the same. It'll just sound sort of more consistent. And then as for placement for the XY pair, you typically want them to be sort of just above the snare drum, okay, pointing in either direction above the snare. And I try to set it up so that neither of the two mics are directly pointed at another drum or cymbal, okay? One time I was recording and one of the microphones was pointed directly at the hi-hat. And when I went to mix it later, 
the hi-hat was quite a bit louder than everything else. You can get the same thing if one of the microphones is pointed directly at a tom. So if you can, try to position them so that neither microphone is pointing directly at a drum or cymbal so that they're sort of just going in between and that might get you a more consistent sound. Next up is the kick drum mic. You can see a picture of how my kick drum mic is set up right here. Usually for kick drum we use a dynamic mic because the kick drum is pretty loud. It has a lot of a lot of air moving back and forth so a dynamic mic tends to handle that a little bit better and we don't need sort of that you know high-end detail on the kick drum obviously. Using a dynamic can also reduce the bleed that you get from cymbals a little bit as well. So you want to play around with how close to the kick drum your microphone is, okay? You can go anywhere from a few feet away from the kick drum right up to if you take your the head off of your kick drum like I have or if you have you know a port in the head of your kick drum you can you can put the microphone right inside the kick drum. Play around with that distance see what sounds best Further away in general is going to get you kind of more low end bass response, whereas closer and, and inside the kick drum is going to get you more of that smack of the beater head. So as with anything with recording, pick a spot that you think sounds good. Do a little bit of recording, okay? Don't trust what you hear in your headphones while you're playing. Do a little bit of recording, stop recording, listen back, see what you think, move the microphone around, and then record again. And, and listen again and see what you think. Don't just you know hit the kick drum and listen to your headphones and assume that that is how it's gonna sound because you're really hearing the kick drum in the room at the same time that you're hearing what's coming through the microphone. So make sure you record a little chunk of audio with your kick drum, listen back to it while you're not playing, and then move things around. Next is the snare drum mic. Same kind of idea. We, we usually use a dynamic microphone because of, of sort of the, the sound pressure levels and so on. And again, we don't need a condenser for, for something like a snare drum. You can use a mic stand to position it. You can see here that I have a little clip that I use to clip my microphone onto the side of the snare drum. That works too. The two things for snare drum miking that are going to shape your tone are the distance that the microphone is away from the drum and the direction, kind of where it's pointed. So your microphone can be anywhere from, you know, very, very close to the drum for a very close miking to a few inches away so that it gets kind of a more well-rounded tone of the snare. You can then point your microphone kind of more toward the center of the drum if you want or closer to the edge. They're going to give you different sounds as well. So again, do some recording, listen back, move it around, and just spend some time with it. See what sounds good, see what kind of sounds you like. And this is important too, with the kick drum and the snare drum, you're not just listening to, to the spot mics and trying to make them sound good on their own, you want them to blend well with the sound you're already getting from your overhead mics, okay? So listen to them in solo to get sort of a generally good tone, but then listen to them in the context of the overhead mics and all the other, all the other drum mics as well so that you can make sure that they all blend together nicely. So that's the way that I would recommend recording a drum set with four microphones. If you have the option of a fifth microphone, you might want to consider adding a room mic. And that's just a microphone that's somewhere else in the room, just kind of picking up the ambience and the reverb as the drums kind of bounce around. That can really help you out in the mix later. But this four mic technique is really quite simple. It's a great starting point, a great way to, to record your drum set. If you want to go even deeper into drum recording, check out this link right here. It's a blog article that I wrote up on IndieArtistLounge.com. It's all about miking up a drum set, recording it in your home studio. I think it'll be really helpful for you if you want to get a little more in-depth and, and read about more different techniques for miking up a drum set. While you're there, be sure to sign up to the Indie Artist Lounge newsletter. You'll get some great free tips every week, and I'll also send you some free training resources as well that'll help you to kind of jumpstart your production and your mixing skills. So again, I'm Alex from IndieArtistLounge.com. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.